Ladies, gents, folks, friends, welcome. Yet another video awaits us about DV Session Flush. What is it? We're about to get into it. But before we do, I uh, just want to go over tiny quick changes that, that have been done to the way that the videos are uh, going to be recorded in the future. If you are coming from previous videos, you might also uh, already just notice just by looking at it that I have switched over to VS Codium for the sake of this tutorial. I feel like it's going to be a bit easier. To work with code, previously I was using get it, I think, uh, like a text editor. Uh, I think this is a bit easier to follow and nothing changes for the way that we're doing things. Uh, we'll just have the terminal down here uh, instead of I was having it here, I think, previously. And we'll just source spam bin activate and we could run our Python app just like that. Okay, so what's today's video about? Um, today's video is about database session flush. What is it? Uh, so we previously have used database session commit. What was this doing? It was basically synchronizing the things that we've done in Python using the SQL Alchemy ORM uh, to the database. But what if hypothetically, okay, we made this new user, okay, and it already had a uh, ID, the primary key that was auto incremented. So the user, uh, you know, would have an ID. What if we wanted to do something with that ID? Let's say we said uh, print new user dot ID, okay. So let's go ahead and give that a shot, or maybe even let's just do uh, ooh, add uh, new users ID, um, and let's just stringify that. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead. We have currently two users, right? Uh, maybe we can print that as soon as the home page is. No, we, so it's already over here. Clearly, that's what that's what's going on. It's the users. Um, Okay, uh, because it's the user query all cool. So let's say we wanted to make a new uh, user. We'll call it Meho, and we'll do Meho at gmail.com. That's not my Gmail, uh, but we'll just make the password the same. Okay, user's ID is none. Hmm, that's a bit interesting. I thought I added this user and then I printed its ID. It should be giving me its ID. As a matter of fact, if we if we were to go to our template, okay. Um, Let's see if I can navigate my way around things here. Not the user profile at the index. There we go. For user and users, uh, and we can even add the user.id here to showcase the IDs. Uh, it's one, two, three. Okay, so Meho should have the ID, should have said new user's ID three. Uh, why did it say none? Well, the reason is because this, until it's committed, uh, it's not synchronized with the database and the auto increment is something that uh, is happening. The uh, the ID is being assigned when we're adding the user. Uh, it's automatically incrementing based on the last added, uh, added one, for example. But this is one case that if we did database session flush, this is one of the use cases. I'm just showing a practical use case, really. Um, because if you build a lot of programs and you don't use database session flush, this is something that you will already find out by yourself, uh, most likely. So let's say this time uh, we did uh, mo, and it's mo at gmail.com. And that's also his password, terrible idea. But now you can see new user's ID is indeed saying four. Why? Because we toss these, uh, we, we use a, this term flush is being used a lot of different uh, meanings can be attached to it. But in the context of, uh, of SQL alchemy, uh, and especially in our context of Flask SQL alchemy, um, we are using this DB session flush method in order to communicate to the database that these are the changes we have so far, but we don't want to necessarily save them just yet. So why would we not want to save them just yet? Perhaps you have a really, really long operation that you're doing. Okay. You want it to either all succeed or you want it to all fail. For example, let's say that every time a new user is added, you also go to uh, you know, you also communicate with some external services. So for example, if I was doing like, uh, you know, uh, register the user to another database or to, let's say to, uh, if you're using a third party service, I'm trying to think of something right now. Um, <laughs> let's say for some reason you want to subscribe the user to YouTube premium for some reason, right? If, if this, okay, if this fails, okay, subscribe to premium uh, new user, okay, if this fails, if you have a function like this somewhere up there and you're doing this and it fails, um, 
maybe you don't want the user to even exist. Perhaps instead of making that user and adding it to the database, you should tell them here something went wrong because, you know, we couldn't communicate with YouTube, for example. Instead of if your service does rely on YouTube Premium, uh, instead of making them an account and then being like, uh, you know, uh, you're running into some issues constantly, for example. So this is one example, for example, uh, that, you, you know, you might be... Uh, you might be interested in using database session flush. You might be interested in using database session flush when you're reading a lot of data from a specific area and you're pro processing that data and you're constantly adding parts of it and bits of it to the database and you're doing different operations and you need everything to be in sync. This is basically what synchronizes your current stuff that you're doing to the database without necessarily saving it to the database. Until you call database session commit, nothing is saved. This is cool. Uh, if you have a user and the user uh, is, you know, every time you make an account, you add, for example, a user and then you have like user default, you know, uh, let's say if it's, if it's something about, if it's a video game and you have the user has pets, uh, and there's always a default cat that comes with the user as soon as you sign up to the game. It will say default use, uh, user cats, add it to the user. In order to do that, of course, let's say you had like a new user pet. And if, if it was called a user pet, for example, it's going to need an ID to connect to the user. It's going to need a user ID to connect to the user. And now you could just give it new user ID after doing the database session flush. Here it wouldn't work. Whereas here it would work. So these these are some of the things to um, some of the use cases of database session flush. It's very cool uh, when you're writing a function. It's very handy. Um, let's say do something right. We'll just do register user as if that's a function, and we're just getting a username, for example. So here, for example, uh, you know you would do you would do your new user. Hypothetically, let's let's actually make this function. Uh, so we have a register user function now. It takes the username. Okay, or rather the name, the email, and the password. Oops. And yeah, uh, it adds it to the database. And now we can database session flush. And now we can print added new user with ID. And we can do new user dot ID. There we go. So this is, for example, uh, and we can return that new user if we wish, or we can we can return true if it's successful. It's up to you really how you want to do this. Um, but let's say that we did register this user. We can return, or we can return their ID, new user dot ID. Yeah, it's really up to you. Oh, but uh, of course, at this point, we would also want to database session commit. We want to commit our changes. We want to actually save it to the database. So this sync to database, and this is really something that you don't need to do if you do database session commit because this already syncs it and permanently saves it sync and permanently save to database okay that's really the difference between these two uh, so this is just to get the app in line with the database and so that they, they are not out of sync basically um, okay cool so we'll we'll remove all of this and we'll just replace our um, We'll just do register user with name, email, and password. And that should serve the same purpose. We really, it's realistically, we if we weren't going to do this, right? Uh, or even if, even if we were going to do this, we could do this after database session committing. But hypothetically, let's just, just to show the use case of database session flash. This is a terrible code. You wouldn't want to do this in real life. But if you had, for example, things you wanted to add to the user down here, then you would want the database session flash. Either the user gets made and everything else related to that user uh, registration phase is going to work or it's not going to work. Either it's all successful or I want none of it to be successful. Then you go ahead and use uh, database session flash. If, for example, YouTube Premium in our previous example uh, was an optional service, that's fine. Then you don't use database session flush. If it's something that is could could work, but it's not a necessity, then you don't need to. It's just about your database logic, but it's a really uh, handy tool, especially later on, you're going to find it very, very useful if you make a lot of applications that get more complex. Uh, let's go ahead and try this out. We now don't need to even database session commit. Uh, and that's the other thing, by the way, if you, for example, run this register user, anything that was done until this register user is called is also going to be committed. 
right? As soon as this gets run. So occasionally you may also want to like, you know, do commit uh, and by default, it's going to be true, for example. Uh, but if it's not, for example, like we, we could do if do commit, this is something that is uh, and otherwise, if you don't want it to be committed, you can do database session flush, right? Why is this? What, what would this establish? Basically, when we register our user, let's say we didn't want the changes to be saved to the database yet, we could do some other stuff and then manually call database session commit, for example. But this again, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves. Uh, we're just gonna leave this out for the moment being, we'll just save it like this. And we're going to test it out as always. So let's just make a user called y. We'll make a user called y at gmail.com. And there we go. And you can see that this does indeed work now. So if we want to check out the entire code, how it looks, this is how it's looking. And this has been a very long video on uh, database session flush. This series is uh, aiming to kind of explain the way that we're doing things uh, rather than just doing them. I might perhaps in the future make another uh, series that is something along the lines of speed running flask, which just does, uh, for example, like an application um, in, you know, from a zero to hero in two hours, but I don't know if it's going to be as beneficial in terms of understanding the concepts in that case, because I'm really trying to explain uh, in depth the, the details of what we're doing. So uh, you can leave your feedback in the comments section if you are watching this to uh, to let me know if you'd be interested in that type of series. Perhaps I'll be getting to that at some point. Uh, in any case, I bid you farewell. I wish you a wonderful day and hopefully to see you again in the next tutorial. Peace.